G'day guys, welcome back. I'm gonna do a traveling pour for you today in some lovely bright colors. That's them there, yellow, dioxazine, purple, magenta, um, did I say yellow? White, <laughs> purple, magenta, yellow, purple again, because I love purple, and some orange. Right, so um, they're in the global paints, and my pouring medium today is 60% glue, 30% water, 10% Floetrol. It's the same pouring medium I use for my flip cups. It's nice and thick, so it works well for this uh, technique as well. And so I'm using the magenta. This is a really, really thin paint, so I've had to add a lot more paint to the pouring medium to get it to the right consistency. It's really thin. The yellow, on the other hand, is quite thick, so I had to add more pouring medium to the yellow. This is cool yellow, orange, and the dioxazine purple, which I've made myself. That's it there, lovely dark purple. And that's pretty thin as well, so I've had to add an extra dollop of paint to the pouring medium to get it to the right consistency. So I've got a nice mound. I'll show you on the orange. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Nice big ribbon there. Nice mound, a mound on a mound. So hopefully that'll give us nice rings. I'm going to do a traveling pour. So I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna pop that underneath so we'll have an angle and uh, let the paint run down on its own. So that's what I'm going to do. Got my big push pins underneath already set to go. Right, and I'm going to do two cups. Um, as I've told you before, I prefer to do two cups than one giant cup, just because by the time you've you know, shaken your cup or swirled it around, the paint in the bottom has mixed and mixed and mixed. So I'd prefer to do two smaller cups than one big one, but I'll layer them in the same way. So let's get started. So I'll do two layers of each. So basically I wanna do half the cup in the first layer, same as I do in my flip cups. And I'm just gonna pour this down the side. So there goes the purple. So whatever goes in first is going to come out last. So I should have a white center, which is what I'm hoping for. And I think the purple and the magenta will look really pretty next to each other. I'm not really sure what the magenta and the yellow are going to do, whether or not that was a good idea or not. I don't know. But on my next pass, I'm going to just change them like that and see if that's any better. You don't have to have exactly the same each time. So that was the first layer. This is the second layer. And I'm hoping I might have a little bit of the purple left over just for my corners. I did make two purples. I wasn't going to, I was only going to do the one purple and then I thought, mm, I'm going to make another purple um, for my corners. Um, what am I up to? What did I just do? I did purple and then white, did I? Oh, that's right, because it was... It was like that, wasn't it? Oh, I forgot the orange, that's why. Because I swapped them over, I was telling you what I was gonna do and then I, I physically did it. So I'm thinking I've got purple already in there. So let's do this. So I haven't used the orange yet. And now I'll change it around. See, that's what threw me, I think. Oh, look, I can't even remember now. Um, right. Back to the magenta, uh, the dioxazine. I don't know what I'm doing now. Let's keep that little bit. And I'm gonna pop a little bit of water in it, just to thin it down a little bit. And then let's go with this one again. That's right, I was going to do the orange, wasn't I? 
against the magenta just to see how that went my daughter's home sounds like she's got a friend with her she's up for the weekend again she comes up every few weekends she went out for sushi for lunch all righty um, now do I want to do the purple or the yellow no let's do the purple I think the purple would look really stunning wedged between the orange and the yellow won't it let's hope so you can never be too sure when you're coming to use yellow and purple together they can go a little bit muddy so cross your fingers for me that it won't happen today okay and I've got a little bit I've got some magenta left Mm, let's not use it. I think I've got enough paint. I'll use it. I'll keep it. And um, I can use it on the corners if I need to. So I've got a little bit of the dark Cezanne purple left, which I've thinned down with water. So it doesn't leave a trace anymore. And then I'm going to thin this one down a little bit with water as well, just so that I can use that as an extra on my corners. Because you don't want to put paint on the corners that's too thick and then the rest of the paint runs up to it and then like hits it and can't get over it. So it needs to be thinner. So there we go, those are those two ready to go. We'll pop them over there. Righty-o, let's do this. You can go over there. So this is a 30 by 60 centimeter canvas or 12 by 16 inch. Let's just lift it up like that. Oops, not too much. <laughs> My little container will disappear. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pouring there in the middle. And for some reason, my arm wanders over and I end up being more on the side, but I'm going to try and stay in the, in the same spot. So I'm going to pinch the cup here. And it's a good thing to use the paper cups because you can pinch. And just where the paint all got poured in, pinch that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go up and down, up and down, up and down like that. With this one um, on an angle like this, I don't like doing a ring because my two halves are totally different and I don't like that. So I either do just a straight pour, pour in one spot and let it run down. But I've been liking this jagged sort of a pour. We'll call it a jagged pour, hey? All right, here we go. It leaves those little finger type things, which I really like. Oh, I'm liking these colours. When you're doing this, be really, really careful not to let the bottom of your cup hit the paint. I know you're concentrating and watching the top end, but you need to be careful and watch the bottom end as well. Make sure that your cup's not hitting your paint. So once this cup is empty, I'm going to swap over real quick to the next cup. Here comes my white. And I'm going to pinch this one. And I'm going to start again in the same spot. Oops, I don't like what it's doing there though to come back up a bit because it started with a big blob of yellow couldn't be helped and then as your cup empties lower your cup and get closer to the canvas that way you'll get more control and you can get more of a fold as you get closer to the canvas and then you can tip your cup up. See, I'm going off to the side again, aren't I? I can see. Out of the corner of my eye, I'm watching that side. 
Okay, there's the last of it. Okay, done. Now, I can take this away and drop that back down. So hopefully I haven't got too much mud because I've changed cups. As the one cup was starting to muddy, I changed it over and went to my next cup, which is the whole idea of this. Okay. It looks so pretty. Where to start? Where to start? Let's start with some purple up here. It's nice and thin. I think I'll put the magenta down the other end just for something different. Probably will tip most of that top yellow off. Because when you start pouring from your fresh cup, um, obviously all the yellow comes out at once, so it's a big blob there. So I'll tilt that off first. So what I think I'll do is I'll go down to get rid of that yellow up to about there and then off to the side at the same time so I can get to the corner just a touch and back. I don't want to end up with this right over in the corner so I'm going to do a little bit there and then a little bit here. And then come back, oh, maybe a little bit more so it's even. And then come back to the middle. Once it's in the middle, then I can pretty much just go straight over and a little bit to the side. I don't want to upset my little featherings too much by wobbling them too much. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tricky thing to do. I think I'll leave it like that. I can just touch up this little bit of purple. I actually like that yellow stripe coming down. Come on, purple, off you go. Go, go, go. Doesn't want to. That's all right. I don't want to play with it too much. I like, I like that like that. So let's just come around here and put some purple over the edge. So I just pushed that big blob of yellow over the top, as you saw. I can later on, if I want to, move this paint back up. But for now, I'm liking the purple corners. In these sorts of pores, sometimes you lose a bit of your colours. You know, because they've, they've blended in there. And if you want a particular colour to really stand out, it's a good idea to make a feature of it and have it on your corners. A little bit of difference, a little bit of wow, you know, your, your colour, your smack of purple. It's a lovely bright purple. Okay, so those top end is it's covered. I still have to cover this here. Shouldn't be hard to do. I'll just help it over. Probably the weight of the paint there will just drop it over on its own and I really won't have to do much to it. Although the yellow's gone over there and hasn't gone over there. But hey, it doesn't have to be matchy-matchy. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. But I will take it over just a touch because I want my sides to cover. And back. And obviously the more you stretch, the more you'll open up those rings or type of rings or featherings or little fingers, whatever you want to call them. The more you stretch your paint, the more you're going to open those up and they'll be wider. And if you've got a nice thick mix, they'll be more, uh, more visible, more prominent. So down we go. Get the shadows out of the way. Now, I wanted to do magenta down here, I think, just because I can. I've got my purple hit up there. And down here is quite a lot of the magenta with the yellow. So I think that will look nice with the magenta down on this corner. 
I love doing these paws, traveling paws. Love them. They're so peaceful. <laughs> They're not as stressful as the flip cup paws. Oh my goodness, flip cup paws can be quite challenging. Definitely not for the beginner. They've taken me over a year to get right. And I still have bad ones. I look at it and I go, oh, what did I do? How did I get such a bad paw? We have good days and we have bad days. We just have to accept it, learn from our mistakes, move on and try and do a better one next time. That's all we can do. All right, I might, I'll leave that for now. I can touch those bits up later on. Let's get to the fun part. Wow. I'm liking those colours and I'm really glad that I haven't lost the yellow. Because sometimes, you know, you really lose your yellow and I really wanted that nice bright pop of yellow. So basically straight down at the moment. And then when it gets almost to the bottom, off to the side, aiming for that corner. Leave a little bit of the magenta there on purpose. Come back to the middle and I'm going to flip it. Ooh, I'm liking this. Likey, likey. I've been wanting to do these colours for ages and I thought, oh, I don't know if they're going to work. You know, because they're very bold colours. Right, back to the middle. Now, I'm just going to aim for this corner. So down and to the side. Actually, I kind of need to cover this as well, don't I? I might have to go to that side first. I don't know if I can anymore. Bring the weight of the paint back. I have to bring the weight of the paint back again to be able to get it to go over there where I want it to go. Okay, that's gone over. Now I need to take it back down again. It's about there at the moment, so a little bit close. When it gets to about there, then I can change directions. About now. Change directions, down and to the side at the same time, and back. All right, I'll have a look at that, see what I think. Oh, the purple's prominent, isn't it? It's um, really showing up there. I like that. Mmm, happy with that. It's not too matchy-matchy. Do we want to keep this yellow is the question. I've taken the yellow off there. But again, matchy matchy. I kind of like it when it's not exactly the same. So I've got a full band of yellow through here. And there's just a little band through there. Wish you guys could talk to me. Tell me what I should keep, what I should lose. don't know. Let's bring it back up a bit and see what it looks like anyway. Take the weight of the paint back up a bit to the middle. That's opened up this yellow here. Mm, I'm liking this orange through here and these bits of magenta they've got little tufts of orange on the bottom. I'll take you in for a close-up later so you can see them. They're really pretty. I'm thinking maybe I do need to take this yellow blob off just a little bit, just a touch. Do you guys agree? So it looks like my weight of my paint sitting about here at the moment, so I need to move it over. And I've just Take it over a little bit towards you. Get rid of some of that yellow. Just a little bit of the yellow. Let's see how that looks. Is that better? I've kept that bit there that I like. Kept that. 
just need to center it a little bit more now. Yeah, I'm happier with that. Now I kind of want to get this off as well. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. All right, I like that, how it's centered now. Happy with that. Got my yellow on the bottom. I might try and get rid of some of this because it's quite a lot of yellow now, isn't it? And we do have to learn when to stop. I think that's our, our main problem is learning when to stop fiddling. So I could ruin it all by stretching it that way now. A little bit of the yellow, eh? Just a touch. How's that? <laughs> now I'm liking that side better without the yellow. Oh dear. You know what I've got to do, don't you? So having a lot of paint is a good thing because you can tilt some off, check it, if you don't like it, tilt some more off. You don't have enough paint you can't do that mm, maybe I'll leave it maybe I'll leave it it's more abstract this way with a little bit of yellow here and then a lot of yellow there don't you think I think me thinks I do I do like it Sometimes when they're just too matchy-matchy, it just looks like a spine. All right. Um, let me torch it. Make sure we don't have any air bubbles. And obviously there's no silicone in this because I don't want cells. Up some of this yellow and put it there. And I think that's the only little spot there that needs covering. This little bit is just a tiny little bit of magenta on the corner there. I like my magenta corners down here and then I like the opposite, the purple up there because it really picks up the colours in here. See this is so busy, it's got lots of little stripes. I personally like having a bolder block of colour on the corners just I think it helps balance it because it's so busy in the middle it's just somewhere for the eye to rest on the edge there but that's me personally I like to do that rather than have the lines all the way up here I think that would be really quite busy now I just need a little bit of purple up here and what do I need there? I need some of that muddy colour. I oh, know, it sounds awful, but I need a muddy colour there. Always going to get a little bit of mud from mixing colours. Can't be helped. I'll take you down later and show you the sides because the sides are gorgeous where the paint's actually run over the sides. Pretty, pretty. All right, now this whole corner needs covering with magenta. purpley colour. Oops, snipped. There we go. Some of that purpley yellowy colour. So that's it. What do you think? Still could take some of this off, but no. Because then it would just be all magenta then I'd lose that yellow band. I like that yellow band. So somebody stop me. 
Alright, wipe the sides again. I'll take you in for a close-up. So I want to do these, these colours. I've got a few different techniques, but I want to do these colours in. So I will be doing more of these, so watch this space. All right, let's get you down. There's not a lot of white in it, is there? Lost a lot of the white, which is a bit of a shame. It's up there, up the top, but yeah, kind of lost it. I'm going to have to try again with a bit more white, but really, really love that section. So, have a look at the end of the little feathers there. I call them feathers. They're multicoloured. They've got blue tips. Well, they've got the magenta in the middle, then they've got the yellow, and then they've got the little blue tips. So pretty. And this, these little fingers here are really pretty. Love this technique. And then the dioxazine purple with the yellow is really stunning too. I like that little corner up there. And down here, we've got our orange stripes. Magenta on each side, which balances it really nicely. And the sides. I'll show you the sides. Look at that. The colours go down the side as well, which is why you don't want to be sticking your fingers in them and trying to match up colours with your fingers. It's easier just to put a big blob of paint there and let it run over on its own. Okay, so that's it there. Hope you enjoyed that video. Have a go with these colours. As I said, I'll be doing them again. I've got a few different techniques that I want to use with these colours. Mm, the orange is quite overpowering. It's not a lot of dioxazine purple. Considering I put two cups in, there's not a lot. The orange has kind of taken over, but hey, it's beautiful. Love it. All right, hope you enjoyed it. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.